The human skin is a protective envelope and a conduit to the outside of the body. Scientists are asking what is good and what is bad for the skin. It's an important question for the cosmetics industry. How can we know that creams we put on our skin are safe? Up to now, skin products were tested on animals, which meant suffering for the animals. That also couldn't prevent new products that caused allergies from coming on the market. That's because animals' immune systems can react quite differently than humans. Tests on model human skin could replace animal experiments. Tissue engineers have developed and built what they call an automated skin-producing factory. Different types of cells from a tiny sample of skin are separated from one another and put into incubators. There the cells multiply. Machines bathe them in special nutrient solutions. Once they're grown, the two different cell types are brought together to form a double-layered model skin. It sounds simple, but it's just like bringing people together. Two people who live together will often squabble over food. It's like that with cells, too. Every cell type has certain requirements regarding the cell culture medium. We have to optimize it to suit both of them. Each cell type has to live with certain limitations and accept that the other one has certain needs. Here the researchers seem to have found the right compromise. The gel-like pieces of tissue have physiological properties that make them similar to natural skin. Tests of chemicals, medications and cosmetic creams may prove to be more accurate on the model skin than on animals. Under the microscope we can see how the pink surface of the artificial skin reacts to an applied cream. It's clearly damaged. Too much sun is bad for the skin. The sight of sunbathers makes Heike Wallis a little anxious. She knows about the damage the sun can do. It perturbs me when I see people baking in the sun. I know what the energy carried by the sun's rays can do to the cell. The process of turning a healthy cell into a mutated cell takes place very quickly. It's even possible to monitor the development of skin cancer using the artificial human skin. The scientists are experimenting with melanoma to find out what makes this form of cancer so aggressive and how it could be tamed. The pigmented cells are easy to spot under the microscope. But in order to investigate how the cancer develops and to test new therapies, the researchers have to make their skin model more sophisticated. Here is a bioreactor where the scientists have placed human skin cells on a scaffolding made of pig intestinal cells. The tissue has blood vessels, which supply oxygen to the growing skin tissue. This can produce skin for transplants made of the patient's own cells, solving problems like immune reactions and rejection. We put the human cells here in the bioreactor and they already start breaking down the pig gut. When they're implanted, there's still a lot of pig carrier substrate. But after six months, the entire implant consists of the body's own material. All the pig intestine is gone, and it's all the body's own tissue, all human. So there's no danger it'll be rejected. Large-scale burns or other injuries, for instance due to a skin cancer operation, would become less dangerous. A few healthy skin cells bred in the special skin factory would produce a usable piece of the patient's own skin that fits like a glove. If I imagine I have a really big wound, from burns say, and I know that I only have to wait a few weeks to get my own skin, I wouldn't find that scary. It's a very good prospect. 
nicht unheimlich, sondern eine schöne Perspektive. The scientists are hoping their model skin will not only help improve transplants, but tell us much more about the body's protective envelope.